How many of Jell-O's six delicious flavors have you tried recently? Probably all of them. But if you haven't, why not decide right now to enjoy the rest of them just as soon as possible? Sure, you like them all because they all have that tempting look. And each one is equally outstanding for rare, delightful flavor. A flavor as refreshing as the juicy, ripe fruit itself. You might try Jell-O's three citrus flavors. Perhaps a gay dessert made with golden orange Jell-O or a mold of shimmering lemon Jell-O or tangy lime Jell-O, the very color of bright green limes hanging in the summer sun. Try cherry Jell-O, too. Ruby red cherry Jell-O full of rich, enticing goodness. And by all means, don't overlook strawberry and raspberry Jell-O because you'll find they're better than ever. Each has a new, improved flavor obtained by using a natural flavor base artificially enhanced. And the result is something mighty swell. Dessert enjoyment at its downright best. So try a tasty Jell-O treat real soon. Whether your favorite fruit is strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, or lime, you'll find a grand treat waiting for you in Jell-O. set to music from Crazy with the Heat as played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to announce that Jack Benny is at home this evening where he is packing for a sudden and unexpected trip to New York City. Mary Livingston is with him. So without further ado, we take you to Jack's home in Beverly Hills. Take it away. Now, let's see. One, two, three... Uh, what else do you want me to do, Jack? Uh, just a minute, Mary. Three, four, five, six. Mary, do you think I ought to take six of these to New York? Oh, take them all. No, these will be enough. I'll take six. Take the whole box. How much does Kleenex cost? <laughs> That's not the point. I'll just take six. If I had a cold, it would be different. Now, let's see. Uh... Say, Jack. What are you going to New York for anyway? I told you, I'm going there on business for a couple of days. I'm considering a part in a Broadway play. Are you kidding? No, I'm not kidding. I've had my fling in pictures, and I'm going to tackle the legitimate theater. In fact, I'm toying with Shakespeare. Why don't you get a yo-yo and leave him alone? <laughs> now, Mary, I'm serious. One of these days, you'll see a big electric sign on Broadway, Hamlet, starring John Benny. John Benny? Who's that? Me. I'm going to change my name. Well, here we go again. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. You can jest, Mary. With a little experience, I may become one of the leading interpreters. Interpretators? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> if I don't get away from Phil Harris, I'll go nuts. <laughs> Mary, with a little experience, I may become one of the leading interpreters of the immortal bard. Now, let's finish this packing. Okay. <laughs> hey, Romeo, uh, Romeo, art thou taking this hot water baggie? <laughs> Certainly, it's cold in New York. I want that hot water bag, my heavy muffler, those galoshes, my mittens, and that brick. What are you taking a brick for? I'm going to heat it and put it in my bed. <laughs> now, let's see, what else? Hello, Miss Livingston. Hello, Rochester. Oh, Rochester, my plane leaves in a couple of hours. Did you alter my tuxedo like I told you to? Yes, sir, here it is. Alter your tuxedo? Yeah, I told Rochester to take the satin cuffs off the sleeves. They're all right, but they're a little dated. That belt in the black ain't exactly cafe society. <laughs> well, no, but I may buy a new one in New York. Here, pack my tuxedo, Mary. Okay. Say, Jack, what's this deep pocket for in the back? Where? Right here on the inside. Oh, that. Uh, I did a magic act for a while in vaudeville, and that's where I kept my rabbit. That was a pigeon, boss. It was a rabbit. Uh-oh, -uh, it was a pigeon. Rochester, I ought to know. I'm telling you, I kept a rabbit in that pocket. Okay, it was a rabbit. You're darn right. 
And that egg I found was a mothball with a yolk in it. <laughs> An egg? Oh, 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 now I remember. That was a pigeon, and I used it in my violin act. Oh, boy, was that corny. No, Mary, it was one of the most beautiful things I ever did. Gee, I remember that act of mine. I used to come out on the stage in an amber spotlight and play the glow worm. The glow worm? Yes, and near the finish of my number, Natalie would... That was the pigeon, Natalie. <laughs> Natalie would come out and fly around the whole auditorium. And just as I'd hit the last high note, she would swoop down, light on the end of my violin bow, and stand there with a neon worm in her mouth. <laughs> oh, the... Really, the effect was simply wonderful. And then for an encore, the pigeon would sit up on my head and coo while I played Waters of the Minnetonka. <laughs> Oh, that, that pigeon was so cute sitting there. Uh, remember the night she got knocked off with a tomato? <laughs> you never even saw the act. It was sensational. Whatever become of that pigeon, boss? Oh, we split up. <laughs> and, you know, Natalie isn't doing so well. I saw her in a pot pie at the Brown Derby the other <laughs> night. Uh, gee, Mary, we better... Um... She was still tender, though. Mary, we better hurry with this packing or I'll miss my plane. Uh, do you want this string? That's a tie packet. Oh, Rochester, I want you to take care of our boarder, Mr. Billingsley, while I'm away. You know, see that he gets his meals on time and everything. I don't want to be alone with that man. I tell you, boss, he's cuckoo. Oh, you're always saying that. What's he done now? Well, last night he put on a fur coat and told me he was a beaver. A beaver? Oh, he was probably just going to a masquerade party. Well, he came back later and built a dam across the swimming pool. <laughs> what? You mean to say he built a dam clear across my swimming pool? Yeah. Well, why didn't you go out and catch him? I tried to, and he told me he was out of season. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, he better clean out that pool while I'm gone. Say, Jack, what? where's that mechanical man Mr. Billingsley invented? Oh, he's around somewhere. Rochester's scared to death of that robot. I'm scared of anything that nicks my razor when I hit it. <laughs> well, don't tease them. Say, Mary, uh, pack, uh, pack a couple of those... Uh... See who's at the door, Rochester. The door? Yes. Maybe it's a salesman selling something we got enough of. Well, go and see. Let's find out. Okay. Never saw such a lazy guy. Mary, pack a couple of turtleneck sweaters. I'll need them. In. That sweater over those ears. I pull them up from the bottom like a girdle. <laughs> How do I get them over my ears? Let's see. I hope I didn't forget anything. It's Mr. Harris, boss. Hello, Phil. Hiya, Mary. Hey, Jackson, here's that suitcase you wanted. Thanks, Phil. It's nice of you to lend it to me. Boy, get a load of those labels on it. Yeah, I had it with me last summer when I was on the road playing them one-night stands. Oh. <laughs> hey, Jack, look uh, at this label here. Rich Carlton Hotel, Empty Jug, Texas. <laughs> empty Jug? That's us, kill them and fill them. <laughs> I never heard of the town. Where is Empty Jug, Phil? It's about 50 miles this side of Bottoms Up. Oh, fine. <laughs> All those jerk water towns. Phil, why don't you get booked into cities like Fort Worth or Galveston or San Antonio or Dallas? Leave me alone, Jackson. I know my market. <laughs> I'm glad you do. At least you're not kidding yourself, Phil. I'll give you credit for that. Yeah, credit. <laughs> oh, Dennis, I didn't see you come in. Well, I finished mowing your lawn, Mr. Benny. Is there anything else? No, that's about all. What do I owe you, Dennis? Well, two hours at 50 cents an hour. That's 75 cents. Oh, what a kid. Dennis, you're cheating yourself. Fifty cents an hour for two hours is a dollar. It wasn't last week. <laughs> Dennis, that's about all. Okay. Do you mind if I go in the other room and practice my song? No, no, go right ahead. Go in the living room, Dennis. There's a piano there. Thanks. Okay. Well, Mary, my suitcase is about full. We'll start on Phil's now. Open it up. Okay. Be surprised how many things you have to take with you. Hey, Phil, what's all this stuff in here? Oh, those are the posters we put up when we're on the road. 
Let's see one of them. Well, I'll be darned. Coming next week to the Trianon livery stable, <laughs> Phil Harris and his barefoot serenaders. <laughs> Phil, don't your boys wear shoes when they're on the road? Ah, we don't want to make our audience feel self-conscious. <laughs> oh, I see. Now, Mary, take these posters out of Phil's bag and put my wool socks in it. Oh, Jack, you're taking too much stuff with you. No, I'm not. Now, Mary, fold these things neatly, will you? I'll need all the space I can get. Okay. And, Phil, hand me my dressing robe. Here you, you are, Jackson. Thanks. I know you're taking chances in New York, you know. It's pretty cold there. It all comes back to me now. Of midnight blue, your face uplifted to my own. We called it a thrill of the moment and blame the moon up above. We didn't know what the glow meant, we never dreamed it might be love. It all comes back. The love I threw away Now each lonely night I pray That it will all come back to me Someday It all comes back to me now The love I threw away now each lonely night I pray That it will all come back To me I guess that's all the shoes I'll need. Say, Mary, do you think I ought to take a pair of rubbers to New York with me? I already packed your galoshes. Well, they're for snow. I want the rubbers in case the snow turns to rain, you know? Well, why don't you take some skates in case the rain turns to ice? Skates? Say, that's not a bad idea. Uh, pack them, too. Uh, why don't you take a spoon in case the ice turns to ice cream? Oh, quiet. <laughs> <laughs> so smart lately. <laughs> Now, let's see. I'll be going out nights in New York, so I'll need a... Uh, oh, Rochester! Yes, boss? A run next door to Mr. Ronald Coleman's house and ask him if I can borrow his opera hat. It's hanging in your closet now! <laughs> oh, yes. I borrowed it for my cousin Rita's wedding. She's had twins twice since then! <laughs> oh, it hasn't been that long. Oh, I know what I need. Now, go over and ask Mr. Coleman to lend me his black evening cape. That'll come in handy with my full-dress suit. You mean his full-dress suit? All right, go borrow it. How do you know he's got an evening cape? I've seen him wear it in three pictures. Go get it, Rochester. I wouldn't borrow anything else from Mr. Coleman, boss. I don't think he likes you for a neighbor. Ronnie, what are you talking about? We're very good friends. Did you see that sign he put up in front of his yard? What sign? House for sale as soon as I get my clothes back. <laughs> oh, well, there's a smart alecky thing to do. Who does he think he is, anyway? He must be pretty sore at you, Jackson. Who cares? Why should I worry about Coleman? He never listens to my program anyway. How can he? We've had his radio for two years. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's going back first thing in the morning. Needs new tubes anyway. Now, let's see. Mary, stop jumping up and down on those shirts to get them in the suitcase. You're not making wine. <laughs> say. Well, you've got too much stuff in here. Not if you pack them right. Be neat. That's how you got fired at the May Company. <laughs> <laughs> we ought to get something from them pretty soon, <laughs> don't you think? <laughs> Even if it's just a little handkerchief, you know, I... Well, I've got... Well, I guess... 
Well, I guess I've got everything now. Yeah, I think... Oh, oh, hello, Mr. Billingsley. Good evening, Mr. Benny. Getting ready for a trip, I see. Yes, yes, I'll be away for a few days. I'm flying to New York. Flying, eh? Would you like to borrow my magic carpet? No, no, thanks. I'll, I'll take the plane. <laughs> After all, New, uh, New York is pretty far to go on a magic carpet. I'll be glad to put a hostess on it. <laughs> no, no, thanks, just the same. I'll just be an old stick in the mud and take the plane. <laughs> I hope you'll be comfortable while I'm gone. Oh, don't worry. Mr. McDougal will keep me company. Mr. McDougal? That's the robot. Oh, 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 uh, by the way, how is Mr. McDougal? Oh, he's been in a frightful mood all day. I think I'll have his oil changed. <laughs> his oil changed, eh? Would that help? Always helps me. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, well, well, hmm, hmm. If you'll, uh... If you'll, uh, if you'll excuse me, Mr. Billingsley, I'll go on with my packing. Of course. Good night, Mr. Benny. Good night. One never knows. <laughs> you know, that guy is a little eccentric, but I, I can't help liking him. Does he always carry a bunch of bananas over his shoulder? <laughs> no, this is the first time. Well, I might as well finish my packing. Now, let's see. What else do I have to do? There's the buzzer. I wonder if I took along enough handkerchiefs. Oh, sure. You got plenty. Yeah, I guess so. Hmm. Oh, Rochester! Yes, boy! There's someone ringing the doorbell. Maybe you go away! Anybody. I never saw anybody so allergic to doors. Well, Mary, I guess I've got just about everything I need. Huh? Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. You want to take your step-ins, don't you? Mary, men refer to them as shorts. With lace on them? <laughs> That's not lace. They're just frayed a little. I'll buy new ones in New York. Why don't you buy us some from Ronald Coleman? We're not speaking. Not until he removes that sign from his front yard. Announcing Mr. Don Wilson. You don't have to be so formal, Rochester. Hello, Don. Hi, Don. Hello, oh, hello, everybody. Hello. Well, Jack, here's those ice cream puffs or those uh, cream puffs that you asked me to bring over. <laughs> Don, I know you haven't got much to do this week, but don't pad your part. <laughs> One word isn't going to help it any, you know. <laughs> what was it you said, Don? What? I said, here are those cream puffs that you asked me to bring over. Cream? What are these for? Well, you phoned me this morning and asked me to bring over some cream puffs. I asked you for earmuffs. It's cold in New York. <laughs> the silliest thing I ever heard of. Oh, I'm sorry, Jack. I'm sorry I stumbled and misunderstood you. That's all right. Mary, put these cream puffs in my suitcase. I'll eat them on the plane. Thanks, Don. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, Rochester, get the car out of the garage. We'll be leaving for the airport pretty soon. Yes, sir. Phil, help me close the suitcase, will you? Okay, Jackson. He was darn nice of you to loan it to me. Ah, oh, don't mention it. A friend in need is a friend indeed, like my teacher says. Oh, so you're studying Proverbs in night school now, eh, Phil? Yeah, here's another one. Early to bed and early to rise... Won't help those bags under your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> he has to have Proverbs. I got a swell one, Jack. What? A penny saved is a penny earned. Say, that's good. I ought to remember that. Remember it? You wrote it. <laughs> Mary, believe me, I never heard of that proverb before in my life. By the way, Jack, uh, what time does your plane leave? In about... Say, look what time it is. We better get a move on here. Come on, Phil, help me close this suitcase. You got too much stuff in there, Jackson. Well, look, I'll sit on it, and you snap the lock. Okay. There. Now, snap the lock, Phil. Careful now. I'll be all right. Snap it. Okay. Yay! Open it! Open it! Open it up! Open it up! Woo! 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 
you're doing. I told you to be careful. Well, you didn't have to. Now, how are we gonna, how are we gonna close this suitcase? I'll sit on it, Jack. Okay, Don. Now, hurry, we gotta get going. Now, Mary. <laughs> well, there goes the cream puff. <laughs> Phil, tie a rope around the suitcase and let's go. The car's waiting, boss. We'll be right out. Where's Dennis? He's in the other room. Hey, Dennis, you wanna drive to the airport with us? I live out that way. I'll ride my bicycle. All right. <laughs> We're coming, we're coming. Everything has to happen to me when I'm in a hurry. I see you guys to come down and see me off. Are you comfortable back there, kid? I'm okay, Jack. I was seasick for a while, but I'm all right now. Well, we'll be there pretty soon. We're making pretty good time. What are you talking about? We should have been at the airport half an hour ago. Well, don't forget, Mary, we had a few hills on the way. When we come to the next one, I'm not going to get out and walk for anybody. You'll get out the same as everybody else. <laughs> Rochester, can't we go just a little bit faster? What does the speedometer say? Take your choice. There's no needle on it. <laughs> I'll step on it. I've got to get my ticket, check my bags and everything. Gee, it's a beautiful night, though. What are you blowing the horn for, Rochester? I want to pass that catalog. Cadillac. I must be crazy. <laughs> Rochester, if you can't pass a catalog with this car, I'm really going to get rid of it. And just drive. Say, Jack, are you going to see Fred Allen while you're in New York? Well, I certainly won't go to his house, and I doubt that I'll run into him on the street. Oh. You see, Allen never goes outdoors in the wintertime uh, due to thin blood and shoes. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good, Jackson. You ought to use that on the program sometime. No, I'm not kidding, Phil. The soles on Allen's shoes are worn so thin that he can stand on a lawn and feel the grass growing. Make a note of that, Mary. I can use that gag. Write it yourself. How can I write? I gotta wave this lantern. Do you want somebody to bump into us? <laughs> anyway, don't bother. I'll remember the gag. Hey, look, Jack. There's Dennis on his bicycle. Oh, yeah. Hello, Dennis! Hiya, Mr. Buddy! Hiya! Pass him, Rochester. Aren't your legs tired from all that pedaling, Dennis? No, nah, this is fun! That's good. Pass him, Rochester. <laughs> You want to hitch on back, Dennis? We'll give you a lift. No, thanks. This is good exercise. Ah, it's good exercise, all right. Pass him, Rochester. <laughs> Pass him. Embarrassing, ain't it? <laughs> well, step on it or something. So long, Mr. Benny. I'll wait for you at the airport. You come back here. <laughs> all right, go on, those reckless kids. Let them go. Oh, Jack! Don't you dare open your mouth. And listen, fellas, I don't want any of you breathe a word of this. I won't, Jackson. Don't worry about me. We still have a lot of time, so let's relax and enjoy the ride. 
Go along fine now. Attention, folks, we're going down a hill. Please fasten your safety belts. <laughs> okay, buckle them on, everybody. You too, Harris. I don't want any lawsuits. Here we go. Whee! Boy, we're traveling now. See you at the airport, Dennis. I knew we'd pass them. Flight number nine, plane leaving for Phoenix, Fort Worth, Nashville, Washington, and New York. Phil, did you have my baggage weighed? The guy's doing it now, Jackson. Good. Here's your ticket, Jack. Thanks, Mary. By the way, Jack, I brought you something to read on the plane. Uh, thanks, Don, thanks. It's I Jell-O's new ticket. recipe book. It has 365 desserts in it, one for each day of the year. Swell, swell. I'll read it, Don. Say, Mary, And if you'll notice, quite... Jack, it has beautiful colored illustrations yeah, I noticed, that tempt uh... even the most jaded appetites. Yeah. Good, good. I'll read it. How much is my baggage? And right if you want additional it? copies, Jack, yeah, just I... send a dime, 10 cents, to Don Wilson, yeah, Battle Creek, Michigan. Michigan. I'll read it. I'll read it. I, I mean, I'll send it, Don. I'll send it. Uh, how much does my baggage weigh, mister? Well, you're allowed 40 pounds on your ticket, and your bags weigh 90. That's Rochester. Take them out of the plane. Okay, boss. 50 pounds excess? That'll cost you a fortune. Cost me... Hold those bags, Rochester. How much is the excess, mister? 50 pounds at 75 cents a pound. That's, uh... That's, uh... 37.50. Open the bags, Rochester. <laughs> Open the bags. Come on, take out that heavy overcoat. Jack, it's cold in New York. I'm no sissy. Take it out. Take it out. <laughs> Take it out. Come on. Take it out. Go ahead. But, Jack, your plane is leaving in a second. Well, it'll wait. It'll wait. Take out those sweaters, Rochester. Oh, wait a minute, Jack. You'll need those. Take them out. Take them out. I don't, take out that dress suit. I don't have to be so formal. Well, what about those galoshes? Take one of them out. He can hop through the snow. <laughs> take them both out. Take them out. Take them out. Now, look, Rochester. I want you to take all this stuff and put it back in the car. Okay. What about these woolen mufflers? Take them out. Take them out. I'm not going to Alaska. <laughs> and when you get home, Rochester, press everything and put them back in my dress. Dresser. How about these mittens? Take them out. I'm not going to the North Pole. Take them out. Take, now, Rochester, be sure and take care of everything. I'll be back in a few days. I'll wire you first, and you can meet me here at the airport. Take those out, too, Mary. Take them out. Take them out. In the meantime, Rochester, keep an eye on Mr. Billingsley, and don't let that robot go roaming all around the house. Well, goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. Take those sweaters out, Mary. Take them out. Take them out. Friends, I have a suggestion to make, and I hope it's one that you will take. Right after this broadcast, get an envelope, and in that envelope, place one dime in coin or stamps together with your name and address. Then mail the envelope to me, Don Wilson, care of General Foods, Battle Creek, Michigan. And in just a few days, you'll be feasting your eyes on one of the most beautiful and original recipe books you ever saw, the new dessert recipe book that everybody's talking about. The book is unique, friends. It really is a brand new invention in recipe books because it gives you a different dessert suggestion for every day in the year, 365 of them. All you have to do is turn to the day of the year you're interested in, and there's a grand dessert idea waiting for you. It's like magic, like having an expert chef standing at your elbow every time you want an idea for a delicious treat. And the pictures? Well, just wait till you see them. You'll enjoy them as much as the desserts they illustrate. Now, here's how you get this swell recipe book, ladies and gentlemen, so listen carefully. Enclose 10 cents in coin or stamps in an envelope, along with your name and address, and mail it to me personally, Don Wilson, care of General Foods, Battle Creek, Michigan. This is the last number of the 17th program in the current Jello series, and we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to announce that during this week, all of us are making a special effort to assist the president in his drive against infantile paralysis. Do your part to protect the children of our country by joining the March of Dimes and sending your contribution to the White House. Good night, folks.